All right, welcome. Welcome everybody. Uh, hello and welcome to our session. Um, we are uh, very happy. We're going to be doing something that's just a little bit different uh, today than what uh, than what we've seen in most uh, most webinars. Uh, this is going to be live demonstration. So we actually don't have uh, any slides for you to follow along. There's not a presentation while we're going. It's just actually going to be Ron um, presenting to us. So um, we're happy about that. But we do have slides available at the end. Um, we encourage you to download those at the end of the presentation today. And also feel free to share those, um, you know, feel free to share those out um, to your friends and colleagues uh, and even on social media. Uh, I'm Eric Sutton with Detection and Measurement Systems and we're the representatives for M4 Connect, and so uh, for, for most of the state of Texas. So um, we're uh, very excited. We're, we're, what we love to do most is get hands-on. So that's really what we're gonna focus on today is getting hands-on. And we welcome the opportunity to, uh, to do that with you and your facility uh, and learn more about your applications as well. So feel free to invite us out. Um, we can also do uh, more of these presentations for you uh, if you would like. So uh, I'm, I'll be hosting today and uh, we're very happy to have Ron Bridges here with M4 Connect. Um, he's your presenter and uh, trainer for today. Uh, Ron is our regional sales manager and uh, he is frequently in uh, the state of Texas uh, here supporting us and uh, coming into your facilities and, uh, and, and, and spending time with you. And we love that. Um, one of the things that we love about Ron is not just that he's you know, a great guy and super knowledgeable, um, but everybody loves Ron. Um, that's, that's one of the cool things about Ron is everybody loves Ron. Um, we actually had a t-shirt made uh, that says that exact thing. Um, true story. So um, we are recording today. And so uh, we'll, we'll, we'll share that with you. And so you can go back and, and watch. But also, again, please feel free to share that um, amongst, uh, amongst your colleagues, but also on social media. More than happy for, for you to do that. And uh, we want to hear from you. So I'll share um, a, a, our sales at detect-measure.com email address and the questions and answers. Uh, welcome you to, to bring that to us and we'll make sure that we share that out to uh, your account managers. Um, but we also want to hear from you today. So use the questions section on the left hand side of your screen. And uh, if we miss anything as we go, I'll make sure to interject um, those questions as we're going along. I'll try not to interrupt too much, uh, Ron. And uh, that's it. Um, without uh, further delay, I'm going to hand it over to Ron, and uh, he's going to run through our agenda and uh, and get started. Thank you so much for being here. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate everybody taking the time here this morning. So, uh, yeah, I'll just quickly run through the agenda. And essentially uh, what we're going to be covering here this morning for the next uh, 30 or so minutes is the smart digital uh, technology from a liquid analysis standpoint and also automated systems. There's one uh, standing right behind me here. What we want to do is we want to focus on the smart digital technology and how it can be used uh, to benefit you and your critical applications. Uh, I think it's no, you know, obviously no secret. Uh, you know, there's less and less people doing more and more things. Liquid analytics is one of those technologies where there is a certain degree, and some of you would, uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure, agree with this statement. There's a certain degree of maintenance that's required when you're dealing with online liquid analytics, whether that be conductivity, ORP, dissolved oxygen, or it will focus primarily and talk a lot about pH. That's the one we see, of course, the, the most uh, feedback from our customers about how can we go about increasing visibility of what's going on with our loop in a way that when we put these on critical applications, we have a, a sense of confidence that it's doing what it's supposed to be doing. And if it does get into a situation where it requires human intervention, we know about it before we get the radio call from the field saying, hey, this loop's offline, it's failed. And then if we're in a situation such as a, 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 a application it's outfall it's an effluent where you are responsible by the state or, the, or the, the, the the epa if you will to monitor that and make sure that what you're putting outside the facility is is safe so these are the types of applications we see more frequently uh, again getting the request how can you provide a solution that gives us that uh, uh, visibility and again that's what we'll cover here this morning so we're going to talk about really three things smart 
digital technology, the Connect MemoSense technology specifically. So we'll, we'll start off with that. And then we're going to talk about diagnostics and, and uh, predictive maintenance and how our technology can provide you that visibility that I spoke of a moment ago. And then the last thing we'll talk about is automated systems, which frankly is going to take everything from the first two topics and combine it into an automated uh, platform. So as we cover that, hopefully this will flow in a way that, that will build upon this information. So let's get right into it. So for those of you who are still in the world of the older simple technology, meaning an analog pH probe, where you have to go to the field to do your PMs, to do your calibrations, uh, to, uh, to do anything essentially to maintain the device, what Kinnick and what we bring forward here at Import Kinnick is a technology called MemoSense. And what we're doing now is we're embedding a, a microprocessor in the sensor itself, in the, in this case, a pH probe. There's also a uh, inductive connection here. And the beauty of this is, is we've got two coils. We've got a microprocessor, but inside of here we have a coil. And then on the uh, cable side, we have a coil which gives us a bayonet fitting connection. But the key piece of information I want to leave with you on this is that this is immune to moisture. So unlike technology where you have, as I said, maybe the older technology and analog system that still uses metal connections, if we have any moisture that gets into this connector or, or onto this sensor, uh, these, these metal pads, that's going to change the impedance of the loop or outright cause a failure of the loop. Uh, one other thing I want to point out is sometimes in an attempt to fix this problem, you'll replace the sensor, but find out that the, the cable needs to be replaced as well. So there is a higher cost uh, to the end user when you use this type of technology because there is a replacement cost that, that goes up. And then, of course, there's the time in the field you have to spend doing uh, PMs and things of that nature. But back to the inductive connection. So now that we provide a system that has the ability to be immune to moisture, this can be serviced in the field. Uh, you don't have to worry about the weather conditions. It can be raining. Uh, matter of fact, we have a lot of customers in Houston where uh, they immerse this directly into the process liquid. Of course, you want to make sure the chemistry doesn't attack the cable, but this can be also immersed with no negative effects on this connection. So we give you the ability to go out, interact with the device without worrying about the moisture or corrosion of the connection. But let's come back to this microprocessor that's embedded in the electrode because that becomes a very important piece of this conversation. So as I mentioned, with older simple technology, analog technology, you have to go to the field to do your PMs, to do your calibrations whether that's a, a two point cow with your form seven or a three point cow, you might be using a buffer 10. You have to bring all that into the field. And especially with a buffer 10, when, as soon as you uncap that, it's gonna draw in moisture. It's gonna potentially change the value of that buffer. Now we give you the ability, in this case, this is what we call the Portavo. This is a smart digital portable analyzer. It's designed to be in the lab or the shop or taken into the field. In this case, we would use it here in the shop to do our two point or three point calibration. Now, the benefit of this is that our calibrations are gonna be much more stable because we are in an environmentally controlled env uh, uh, room, air conditioning, heated, whatever the case may be. Our buffer temperatures are gonna be the same temperature. So we're gonna have a condition that is a lot more conducive to making a better calibration for in the case of a pH probe, let's say. Now, how that works is once we do the calibration, this calibration is uploaded into the sensor itself. So the sensor becomes the portion that carries the calibration. Now, why that's important coming back to the critical, uh, how this is going to help in a critical application. For those of you who may be on the webinar, if you've ever been in a situation where you're in the field, you're, you're working with a piece of equipment, in this case, a pH uh, measurement loop, and you're trying to get it calibrated, and the problem you're running into is that you're having issues with the calibration itself. Uh, you've got the bad cable that I mentioned before, whatever the case is. Now, once you do that calibration in the shop, you have a verifiable, good electrode. 
you take it to the field and we'll use this as our field transmitter. This transmitter is indicating that it's in distress. The Stratus Evo that I have here is saying, hey, I need somebody to come out and take a look at me. I, there's something going on here and it's trying to signal to me there's a problem. With the smart digital technology, now what I'm doing is a hot swap because that calibration has already occurred in the, in the shop. Now all we're doing is we're swapping the sensor and the transmitter just saw the new electrode and I hit measurement and I'm done. I can take this other electrode that was faulty, take it back to the shop and do whatever PMs I need to do with it and reuse it again, hopefully. That would be the ideal situation. But in the field, the hot swap is really all it needs to be done. Now, let's talk about the preventative, uh, or I'm sorry, the uh, predictive maintenance aspect of it. This microprocessor does more than just hold the calibration. It also keeps track of the measurement value, in this case, pH, time, temperature, and glass resistance. Why that benefits us is that information is collected by the transmitter and sent back to your control system, whether that is through uh, heart AMS, field bus, uh, profi bus, uh, profi net. There's a variety of digital communications depending on which technology we're talking about, which transmitter, and that information can be continuously streamed back to your control system, to your DCS. That comes back to the visibility, the 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 ability to see what the status of the loop is. Now, those four measurements I mentioned, those four measurements are also used together to calculate and project the lifespan of the electrode that's connected to that particular loop. So when I use temperature, glass resistance, time, and of course the pH loading, I can then take this electrode or, or see the predicted lifespan in days left in this electrode. So now I have the ability to schedule the maintenance or allow the system, because it's collecting the data, to tell me when the time needs to happen for the calibration versus just setting up a fixed rotation, which is what we mostly all do in the field. Once every week, once every month, we go out and we calibrate whether they need it or not. We pull the sensor whether we need it or not. Now we have the ability for the system to control that and to allow you to work on the applications that require uh, uh, the effort, the effort of going out and doing these PMs. More importantly, on those critical applications, that's, uh, com again, coming back into the visibility, being able to see what's going on in real time before somebody's in the field, sees a red screen, and radios back to the to the control room and says, hey, we've got a problem. At that point, it, it could be too late in some cases. This will help us avoid that. Now we're gonna carry it over to this system right here. So this is our fully automated Unical system. Now, this system is really designed to greatly minimize the amount of maintenance required for uh, a technician in the field on those applications we talked about, the critical applications. So what we're looking at is a transmitter. We're looking at uh, what we call the controller. We're looking at buffer containers, so uh, four to seven and a cleaner. And then over here is where we would have a pH probe, in this case, and a holder. And it is designed to automatically insert the electrode into the process, measure, and then was, we talked about that uh, predictive maintenance, the output of the transmitter provides that information in a continuous stream of diagnostics, condition of the sensor, lifespan of the sensor, and so forth. The, the transmitter sends signals to the controller to indicate when a cleaning needs to occur. And this can all be pre-programmed in the controller so the system can be set off on its own and just start to work. And then when the time comes where we have to retract the system for cleaning, that's all transferred over to the controller. The controller sends air to the, uh, the holder, so it pneumatically retracts the sensor. The pumps kick in. We can bring in cleaning solution from this container to clean off the electrode. We can also bring in plant water, so we can bring a, a, a water source to the controller. And then we use plant air, as I said, to pneumatically drive the sensor in and retract it. So in applications like a platformer where uh, a heavy 
requirement of making sure the effluent from the wash tower is being monitored very closely. This is the system that can alleviate the strain on the maintenance shop for people having to go out to, or actually quite frankly, three or four or five times a day doing those grab samples. This system can handle that workload and take it off of that individual. So to give you an example, the ability of the system to do calibrations, you can get up to about 140 uh, calibrations with the Unical on one fill of these buffers. Now, if I'm in the audience, I'm thinking, well, how do I know when I need to refill these containers? Well, internally is level control. That information is fed to the transmitter. So if we get to a point where the level of the container reaches a point where there's approximately 10 more calibrations left, we send a signal to the control room to say, I need you to come out and refill these containers. You don't have to take the system offline to do that. You just peel back the lid, refill each container, and the system just continues to operate. Now, if you have a situation where there's some type of a, a, a problem, emergency, whatever the case may be, or someone has to get to the sensor, you can walk up in the field and interrupt the, the operation of the system with the service switch. So I just walk up, I press this switch. What happens is if I'm in measurement mode, which we'll assume is the case, it'll retract that sensor up into the holder clean the sensor and get it prepared for removal so it's safe. So if you do have an application where you've got, uh, you know, corrosive liquids, uh, higher pressure, temperature, whatever the case may be, it's going to put this sensor into a situation or a condition where the technician does not have to worry about doing the sensor swap. You just pop the lid off. And just like what I showed you with the other sensor, it has the same inductive connection on top of the sensor. So I would remove that sensor, take my pre-calibrated electrode, put it into the holder, and then again, I just connect that inductive connection, put my cover back on, and the system goes right back into operation just by simply hitting this button. And it picks up where it left off. So what you end up realizing is much, much, in those, especially those critical applications, much higher uptime. So where a sensor swap in high pressure, high temperature applications where you had to isolate, remove the pressure, remove the process, drain the line before you can access the electrode, this all happens while the process is running. There's no need to shut the process down. It's a continuous measurement. And because we can seal that electrode from the process, so this would be, as I said, on a pipe or a, uh, maybe a vessel, all that can be done with the process continuing to uh, run. From a smart digital standpoint, and I may have mentioned this already, I'm pretty sure I did, but it's worth repeating, the diagnostics of the entire system, as I said, buffer level, uh, if there is an air leak where the system is trying to insert or retract the electrode, but there's not enough air, that type of information is sent back to the control system to let you know Something needs to be done. We need to go out and find out what's going on. We've lost plant air. We've lost uh, plant water. Uh, there's something going on that needs some uh, more than just uh, go out and swap the sensor. There's something with the system. It has full diagnostics to provide that information back so you can take action in whatever the situation may be. So one of the things that we're going to be doing in Houston is we're going to be bringing this system in the next two months uh, to Houston. And we're gonna spend some time uh, giving people opportunities to come see the system, to fully see it in operation, to ask the questions, to look at the inside of it, to uh, basically get a, a, a in-person feel for what this system can do. We're starting to see, in, especially in the Houston area, we're starting to see much more interest in going to an automated solution and if you look at what the primary uh, industries there in, in that area, uh, oil and gas, refining, um, chemical, where area classifications are very important, this system is designed to operate in a Div 2 environment. So if I've got, as I mentioned, a, uh, a refinery that is looking to monitor an application, uh, for instance, a caustic uh, wash system, 
this system can be put directly into the process unit. The one thing we may add is an enclosure. So we put it inside of an enclosure, but you don't have to purge the enclosure, enclosure if you don't want because the system by design can operate in that environment. So there's no special additional things that have to happen from an enclosure standpoint. Backing up to this transmitter, loop power uh, capability, four wire. We can do again, FM class one division two and class one division one, depending on the customer's requirements. Most everything we see is div two, but occasionally we do run into those situations. Coming back to the portable, this portable, as I mentioned, can sit in the shop or be taken into the field. So we also have a version that is intrinsically safe. So you can take it into the field and you're not going to have to worry about it uh, violating the unit area classification. So that's something that's become very important. Uh, obviously, it's always been important, but uh, something very interesting to our end users, being able to take that device into the field and be able to use it uh, just as if they were in the shop. So, Eric, any questions you want to ask while we're here? Yes. Uh, if you can hear me, let me I can turn this uh, turn this back on and uh, get going. Can you can you get my audio now? Yep. Got gotcha. you. Okay. Okay. Great. Yeah. Uh, got got a got a few questions here, and uh, if if anybody else wants to keep posting uh, those, they're coming through. And so on the left hand side, just questions. Uh, ask your question, and uh, we'll 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 be going through those. So. Um, yeah, just just to go through a couple of things. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, it's great uh, getting to see get to see you run run through all those things. So, um, can can you maybe just talk a little bit more about some of the specific applications um, that that uh, you that that you've been familiar with that you can share uh, with us at the moment? Sure, sure. We've uh, we've done uh, not so not to just focus on uh, just refining or oil and gas. We have used this technology, including the automated system behind me, uh, everywhere from uh, chemical all the way to pharmaceutical. Uh, there's there's a need for this type of technology in every industry, and there's there's always critical applications that would benefit from this type of technology. Uh, we've done some of uh, applications where very uh, sticky very dirty, which where online pH was not even a possibility. You could not use pH or, or P online pH because the probe would accumulate so much uh, buildup so quickly, it just was cost prohibitive. You just could not keep somebody out there going to replace those electrodes. So this system is designed for that type of application in mind. So if you do have a, situ a situation where that's occurring, it may not be an effluent, it's just part of your process. Uh, ideal install or ideal type of application for a Unical system. Okay. All right. Very good. I I, I think that uh, hopefully that answered uh, the question there. Uh, can you expand on the difference between analog and memo sense just to just to make sure that there's no there, there's no questions there um, about about the difference between those two? Sure. Sure. So as I showed before, a simple analog technology, which by far, this is the, the most predominant technology we see uh, right now in the industry, is a simple electro where, again, as I said, you have to go into the field to do the PMs, to, to do the calibration. So you have to bring everything uh, out with you to do your, your uh, two-point cal. If it's a brand new electrode, you're plug it in your new electrode into the transmitter, you have to do the two-point cal. If it's an existing electrode that you're going to do PMs on it, you would have to pull it, let the electrode cool down to the buffer temperature. So that could take 10, 15, 20 minutes before you could even begin to do any work on that electrode. Everything has to happen with the electrode connected to the transmitter. As I mentioned about MemoSense, because we can do this work in the shop, uh, primarily because of the microprocessor that's embedded in the electrode, I'm not having to bring or take my uh, critical measurement offline. It's out there still uh, having a measurement made. The electrode's uh, getting the calibration here in the shop. Whatever maintenance had to be done to it's already taken place. 
So now I carry it out to the field, like I said, and because of that calibration is stored in the head of the electrode, once I do that hot swap, it automatically uploads that calibration into the transmitter and effectively minimizes, of course, it's the, the time you pull the electrode and put the new one in, it minimizes that downtime significantly. We can also uh, do uh, retractable electrodes without an automated system. So we have a lot of customers that will take uh, purchase one of these retractable holders and you manually walk up, retract the, the electrode while the process is flowing, remove it, put in the new electrode, and reinsert it into the process. So that's also a, a capability we have as well. Okay, yeah, great, great, great round. Thank you so much. Well, that's a good clarification on the on the retractable there uh, as well. That it can be used in in non automated systems uh, and get a lot of benefits uh, for uh, for the user and and for the for the measurement. It's great. Uh, a question about um, the diagnostics. Um, yes. So can you can you maybe show a, an example of those the, that diagnostic capability and how you'd be able to see that as a, uh, as a technician? Sure. So let me get to the screen here. When you connect, and now remember, this is the electrode that came off the transmitter that was in distress. So you remember seeing that pink uh, flashing of the screen. So I've connected this sensor to the Portavo, and I, and, and I apologize, the, the, the resolution may not be enough to see exactly what's being shown here. But what we have is a, is a diagram of the different aspects of the sensor, the slope, the wear factor, zero point, uh, a function we call senso check and response time. So this is indicating the slope is off, that it needs uh, someone to take a look at it, clean it, rehydrate it, do a two point calibration and bring it back into specification. So it's a quick, very intuitive way for a technician to look at a sensor and understand very quickly what's going on with that electrode. Now, if you're dealing with a simple device, it can be very difficult to diagnose exactly what's what's wrong with that what's wrong with that electrode. So, I'm going to show you a good electrode. So now, this one's been calibrated, and you can see that the color blue is all the way back up to where the slope is. This electrode is ready to go back into the process. So, we walk you through using the diagnostics to understand if I have a good electrode or if I have an electrode that requires uh, assistance to be put back into the field before it's put back into the field. Yeah, that's that's great. I think that answers the, the, the question there. So um, maybe uh, time for, for a couple of more here. Um, here. Here's one. It says, I have all analog transmitters and sensors, of course, because that's, that's what I've been using for, for years. Uh, yep. Can I use your sensors? Yes. So we do manufacture analog electrodes. Uh, I know we didn't go into detail as to the actual performance capability and specification of our, say, pH electrodes, but we do have quite frequently customers that want to take advantage of our, our electrode technology so we can provide them in an analog format that would be compatible with their existing analog transmitter. So yes, that's absolutely a capability uh, that we can bring uh, if that's needed. Hey, Ron, uh, that that wraps up all the questions that we've received so far. Uh, that was that was really great. Uh, a really short uh, and concise way to uh, to show uh, all these benefits uh, and and. Uh, I really appreciate the opportunity to to have you uh, with us today, and uh, definitely looking forward to uh, to you being here uh, in Texas again. Which I understand that's going to be really soon, right? A week of the of February. Yep. Okay. Okay. Great. And so uh, you welcomed an opportunity to have uh, this unit uh, demonstrated uh, here in in Houston. Uh, Absolutely. So that's, uh, that's still the case. We we would love an invitation to uh, to be able to. Uh, bring that to a facility or uh, even host it here uh, in Houston. So um, anyone and everyone, please let us know if we can set that up for you. 
And um, yeah, I think uh, unless you've got something else, Ron, that you that you want to share, thank you so much for today, and and uh, we'll uh, we'll wrap things up. Great. Well, thank you everyone for taking the time. Really appreciate it. And Eric, thanks for the invitation to uh, work with DMS on this. Absolutely, absolutely. We'll do it again soon. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Bye bye.